Yes, sir. The Boston Celtics had a weird offseason, boys. What's up? We back with another video. Shout out to MDB fam. You know, we drop new NBA videos every week. Today, we're talking about the Boston Celtics offseason and just how it went down. As you guys know, I'm just a casual NBA fan talking shit, just expressing my opinion on the things that happened in the league. I want to hear y'all opinion. I just like talking to other NBA fans and just seeing where people's heads at and stuff like that. So let's talk about the Celtics offseason and see what went down. So let's talk about the good things first. So Jason Tatum, Celtics star player, potential superstar. We've seen superstar flashes from this guy, especially in that one month he had in February, I think it was, where he was balling out. He balled out on the Clippers, that one Clippers game especially. I remember he was balling out, hitting huge step-back threes, crossing over crazy, driving to the rim, drawing fouls and stuff like that. So Jason Tatum, he has superstar potential. He's definitely the Celtics' most important piece. They signed this guy to a five-year max contract. It's like $100 billion or something like that. So this guy's locked in for the next five years. He does have a player option for the fifth year. So if he wants to leave, he could leave or he could opt into free agency, whatever the case may be. I would hate to see the Boston Celtics four years from now just let Tatum walk because the Celtics lately have a have a history of letting notorious free agents walk like Gordon Hayward, Kyrie Irving, um... Who was the next guy? Al Horford, but we'll get into that later. But yeah, so the Celtics signed Jason Tatum to a max contract. I'm a big Tatum fan. Tatum's one of my favorite players in the league. Like the thing I like about Tatum is every every season it's like he gets better. So still with the step backs, there's still a lot of step backs, and but at least he's cut down on the mid-range jumpers a little bit from what I've seen. Celtics fans, tell me how you guys feel about Tatum. Like, what do you like about Tatum? How do you think he could improve? Because I see a lot of Celtics fans complaining about, oh, he takes too much step backs. He takes too many mid-range. Like, what Celtics fans, how do you guys feel about him? Because I don't watch 100 Celtics games a season. I only see, like, maybe some bubble playoffs. I was watching the Raptors series heavily. I saw I saw his highlights from February. So I'm a, I'm a Tatum fan. I like what I see. But Celtics fans, how do you guys feel about Tatum? Like, help me understand as Celtics fans, like, what is Tatum's game like? What do you guys think he needs to improve on? Or, like, are you happy with him? Yeah, so Jason Tatum, I think he has the potential to be a superstar. He improved his driving for sure. Like, one thing I noticed with Jason Tatum, when he's driving to the rim, his footwork got a lot better. He used to be kind of like, I don't know if you guys watch Pascal Siakam, but Pascal Siakam, when he's driving, he's very clumsy. He's very klutzy. And, like, he'll drive and, like, he'll pick up his dribble too early. His gather is not the best footwork. And it results in turnovers. And he can't draw fouls or bad shots. Tatum used to be like that in his first season, but I noticed this season, he got a lot better. Like, I don't know if it happened last season, but this season I noticed it. He got a lot better with his footwork when driving to the rim. He takes contact first, then takes his gather, and then puts the shot up, and he often draws fouls. I'm pretty sure if you check Jason Tatum's free throws right now, this season his free throws definitely have had to have gone up because I noticed this guy driving way better. Shout out to Jalen Brown, too. He got an extension last season. I know we're talking about this offseason, but I just have to shout out Jalen Brown because, in my opinion, he took a step forward this year. I think that the Celtics are in a really good position. This reminds me, this team reminds me, like, of when the Raptors had Tracy McGrady and Vince Carter on their team. But the thing with the Celtics is they were smart enough to keep these guys together. As long as you have Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown together on the same team, you're in a good enough position that you'll be able to compete for the playoffs. But one thing, Celtics fans, you don't want to do is you don't want to get, what's the word? Like, you don't want to get complacent. You guys always want to strive for more because that's the thing with the Celtics this offseason. We're going to get into it, but I feel like they could have made some more moves that would have put them in a better position. Like, they needed to address more of their areas of weakness. So they did sign Tristan Thompson and Jeff Teague addressing two areas of concern for the Celtics, those areas being defensive rebounding and offensive rebounding as well as playmaking and having a backup point guard seeing as they lost Brad Wanamaker I don't remember what team Wanamaker signed with but they got Jeff Teague he's one of the best pick and roll players in the league actually the of the top 10 most efficient pick and roll players in the league the Celtics have four of them Jason Tatum Kemba Walker Marcus Smart and Jeff Teague 
are four of the top 10 most efficient pick and roll players in the league. So that goes perfect when you talk about Tristan Thompson, because Tristan Thompson is one of the best screeners in the league. He's in the top 10 most efficient screeners. Like he has a, he's in the top 10 of the, they call it screen assist. So when you set a screen and it leads to someone getting a buck, bucket or giving someone else an assist, then they call that a screen assist. So Tristan Thompson leads the league in screen assist. And then you have four players in the top 10 in pick and rolls. So I think that's a match made in heaven for the Celtics. So I expect Tristan Thompson to help the Celtics a lot. He's an upgrade over um, Daniel Tice for sure. You, he led the league. Actually, he came second in the league last year in offensive rebounding. I think he had about four offensive rebounds per game. So you're getting more offensive rebounds for him. Defensive rebounding was a little bit of a problem for the Celtics last year, seeing as Daniel Tice is only 6'8". Um, Tristan Thompson is not that much taller, but as I said, he, he came second in the league in offensive rebounding. So you're going to get that and his defensive rebounding is better than Daniel Tice as well. So you guys address those needs. Um, moving on, let's talk about the news that came out over the past two days regarding Gordon Hayward. So as you guys know, Gordon Hayward is signing a contract with the Charlotte Hornets for a max contract for $100,000 billion for 15 years. So Gordon Hayward is going to the Hornets, but right now the Hornets and Celtics are actually working on a last minute sign and trade so that the Celtics wouldn't lose Hayward for nothing, just like they lost Kyrie for nothing and Al Horford for nothing. They're trying to work on a sign and trade that would give them a trade exception in exchange for Gordon Hayward. So the Celtics would get a trade exception. I'm sure you guys know what trade exceptions are. It pretty much means that you can take on salary without sending out salary. So if they got a $10 million player, if they had a $10 million trade exception, they wouldn't have to send out $10 million in salary. Like, that's the simplest way to explain it. And so, yeah, so the Celtics, what were we just talking about? Uh, yeah, they're working on the sign and trade to get that trade exception. So if they can get the trade exception, that's better than nothing. The only thing holding up the sign and trade is that the Hornets are looking to see if they can find someone to take on Nicholas Batum's contract so they can avoid waving and stretching him. I don't know if they'll be able to find that. So we're, we're going to see what happens. Probably by next week, we'll find out if they're able to finalize the sign and trade. I think it would be good for the Celtics to get this trade exception because it's better than nothing, man. And the part that really hurts is the part is the fact that they had a chance to do a sign and trade with the Indiana Pacers, which is where Gordon Hayward originally wanted to go. As you guys know, Gordon Hayward loves Indiana. He played for college there at Butler University. He's a huge Indiana boy. Shout out to my boy Yogi. He's a big Pacers fan. Shout out to my boy Michael. He was one of the reasons why I made this video because he was talking about like um how the, the Boston Celtics have a lot of moves they need to make. We're going to get into that later. But yeah, Gordon Hayward, he wanted to go to Indiana and the sign and trade would have been Miles Turner and Doug McDermott for Gordon Hayward. That's what the Indiana Pacers were offering. To me, that's that's a perfect deal. Like, what what is wrong with that deal? You're getting two players that will help your team. Doug McDermott would slide perfectly in, onto the bench. And then you have Miles Turner, who would be a great starter with Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Kemba Walker, Marcus Smart. But the thing, the reason why the Celtics said no to that is because the Celtics didn't like Miles Turner trade value. A matter of fact, they were actually looking to trade Miles Turner if they did get him in a sign and trade. But the sources say Zach Lowe from ESPN said that they talked around the league, they asked around the league, and they found out that not many teams were interested in Miles Turner. So that kind of turned the Celtics off. So the Celtics proposed a different offer. They said, okay, we'll give you Gordon Hayward in exchange for Miles Turner plus either Victor Oladipo or TJ Warren. So they wanted Miles Turner and TJ Warner or TJ Warren and or Victor Oladipo for Gordon Hayward. And I feel like that was just asking for a bit too much from Indiana. Yes, it's possible, but Danny Ainge is really trying to rape these guys out here in these trades. Like, you want Victor Oladipo or TJ Warren plus Miles Turner? You're asking for a lot, bro. Now, now because you didn't accept the first deal, which would have got you Doug McDermott and Miles Turner, who's on a great contract, can shoot threes and rim protect. Now you're getting a trade exception. It's like, bro... I think the greed set in for Danny Ainge. I understand he wasn't a fan of Miles Turner. So if you're not a fan of a player, you're not going to go out your way to trade for them. But I just feel like it's better to get a guy that you don't like that you could potentially trade in the future if he's not a good fit instead of getting a trade exception. But hey, I'm not a GM, so I don't know. Guys, how do you feel about Danny Ainge's decision not to make the sign and trade that would have gave you guys Miles Turner? 
I think Miles Turner would have been a good fit. I, I know a lot of my Celtics fans who subscribe to this channel, they, they talk about how they would have liked to get Miles Turner or Steven Adams or someone like that, so or Rudy Gobert. So how do you guys feel about Danny Ainge turning down Miles Turner? And now instead of getting Miles Turner and Doug McDermott, you guys are working on getting a trade exception. Like, are you guys mad at Danny Ainge? Do you understand why he did that? Or like, what's your opinion on it? So anyways, moving on now, so Danny Ainge couldn't get a deal done with Gordon Hayward. He's still trying to get it done. And the same thing happened in the draft. Like, if we look at the draft, the Celtics had four draft picks. The, the thing with the Celtics is they don't have enough minutes to go around to put four new young guys onto the team and give them all enough minutes that they need to develop. Shout out to Michael because he brought this to my attention. Michael Spagnolo or Michael Spagnolo, my bad bro for messing up your name, but he brought to my attention that the Celtics have a lot of young guys on their team that all need ample playing time in order to develop and get better. I'm talking about like they just drafted Aaron Naismith. He's one of the best shooters in the draft. He shot 52% from three last year. Some people think it was a fluke. Some people think he can keep it up in the NBA. So we're going to have to wait and see. So they signed Aaron Naismith. They picked up Peyton Pritchard. He's a four-year college player. He won college player of the year for the Pac-12 or some shit like that. I don't watch college basketball. I don't know what that is. So Peyton Pritchard, they got him. They got another point guard. He played for Tel Aviv or something like that. And then they traded their 30th pick to the Grizzlies. And the Grizzly and they picked Desmond Bain. So the Grizzlies get Desmond Bain. Celtics get a future draft pick. So Celtics end up drafting three young guys when the whole time before the draft we're hearing Celtics trying to move up, Celtics trying to trade, Celtics trying to package their draft picks for Kemba for Drew Holiday and stuff like that. So they didn't get no trade that they wanted. The only trade they got was for a future draft pick. And it's like, yo, Celtics, you don't need all these draft players. You don't need to draft all these players. You guys need to make a move to get a solid piece. You need to condense those draft picks. That's what they were trying to do, but they couldn't find a deal. Um, they were actually trying to trade Kemba Walker. They, they were in talks to trade Kemba Walker for a top 10 pick. They're trying to trade Kemba Walker to the Cleveland Cavaliers or Chicago Bulls. But it just didn't work out. The Bulls ended up taking Patrick Williams. Cavs ended up taking up Okoro. And then the Celtics just ended up taking Naismith. So that's two trades now. Well, not even two trades, but that's multiple scenarios where Danny Ainge wasn't able to get the deal done. And it's like, bro, Danny, I think you're asking for too much in these deals. I'm not a GM. I don't know. Maybe you're doing the right thing. But it's just when I see no execution being done, I, I start to get concerned. It's like, bro, what's the problem? Sign the players and get the deal done. Anyways, we're going to move on. Now we're going to talk about the bench. Like, that was one of my biggest concerns with the Celtics because the starting lineup is great. Celtics have a great starting lineup. Kemba Walker, Marcus Smart, uh, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, and now Tristan Thompson. But the bench is my concern because on the bench, you have a whole lot of young guys that aren't really producing at the level that you need them to be to be effective. Like the bench squad is kind of weak in my opinion. I feel like the bench squad needs some improvement. Celtics fans, how do you guys feel about your bench right now? Your bench is looking like Jeff Teague, Romeo Langford, Grant Williams, Robert Williams, and Daniel Tice. You also have um Aaron Naismith and Peyton Pritchard, who you guys just got. Ro I said Romeo Langford. Like you got a lot of young guys that need minutes but there's not enough spots to go around. So it's like, how is the rotation going to work? I feel like Brad Stevens has a big job on his hands. Like he has a lot that he has to deal with this season in terms of giving minutes to all these young guys where if you were able to condense those draft picks and trade or get into the top 10, you could have just had one piece to slide in alongside the rest of your young guys instead of three and four pieces that you have to slide in. It's like, it's a lot of work for Brad Stevens. I, I wouldn't wish that job on my worst enemy, but I'm sure he can handle it. And speaking of Kemba Walker, like this guy's not even going to be starting the season. He's not going to be playing to start the season because he has knee, knee issues. His knee's been hurting him since the Hornets days. The Hornets owner said that, yo, Kemba Walker, his biggest issue is like he doesn't he gets in his own way. He's not willing to say, oh, coach, I can't go tonight. I'm hurt. He'll play through injuries to the point where He's playing 82 games a season, and he's hurt the whole season. He's ruining his long-term future. He's injured right now. The Celtics are working on a plan to figure out how they can slowly ramp up to bringing him back to full starting minutes, but it just doesn't look good. 
a guy like Kemba Walker, like you gotta you gotta know when to sit and when to play, my guy. Especially when in the playoffs you're not able to play a hundred percent because that knee is still bothering you. It puts more weight on Jalen and Jason's shoulders than it needs to be. So Kemba, he's kind of an issue for the Celtics. Celtics fans, how do you guys feel about Kemba? I know Celtics fans are very mixed on him. Some Celtics fans love Kemba. They love his locker room energy. They love how he's a leader. But then some Celtics fans hate Kemba. They feel like he 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 can't finish. He can't score. He runs a lot of useless pick and roll. That's just stuff that I hear. Celtics fans, how do you guys feel about Kemba? But yeah, in general, this off season was just weird for the Celtics. Like they didn't, they weren't able to execute. And it's I think it's because you hear all these rumors. I had high hopes of the Celtics getting like Stephen Adams or like um, Rudy Gobert or, My- or Miles Turner, but they ended up getting Tristan Thompson, who, as I explained to you guys, is a good fit. But it's just like. They could have they could have signed and trade and got Gordon Hayward and got two good players back, but instead they're getting a trade exception. So it's just like Celtics fans, how do you guys feel about this offseason? Like, do you feel where I'm coming from? Do you feel like the Celtics did a good job or like what do you think they could have done better? Let's talk about it in the comments. Other than that, make sure you guys have a good weekend. Have a good Friday. Make sure you do something nice for someone today and take it easy, boys. Peace.